Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining another Ready to Ride Pilates for Horse Rider session. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you're not a horse rider, please don't tune out because I'm sure you'll find all these exercises will be really useful for you anyway. Today we are going to be focusing on multitasking because that is something that is so important for all of us as horse riders. Often we find ourselves with arms and legs doing four different things all at once and so the more we can practice that off the horse, all the better. So let's get started and we're going to work with your head and neck first of all. I'd like you to think about having that nice elasticated spine stretching up from the base of your spine right up through to the top of your neck and into your head so that you have a nice light head. Then you're going to think about gently tucking your chin in so give yourself a nice double chin, hopefully there's no one watching, and keep that double chin as you turn to one side and keep that double chin as you turn to the other side. If you are keeping that double chin successfully, you should find that you can't turn fully to either side. If you can look all the way over your shoulder, that probably means that you have lost that little tuck. So keep the tuck as you turn. This is a good exercise for improving your deep neck muscle activity, which is important for making sure you've got a nice stable neck, none of that wobbly head going on when you're doing a sitting trot. Okay, relax through your head and neck and we're just going to loosen off through your upper back before we move on to the main part of the exercises. So arms across your chest, keep your shoulders level, feel your equal weight through your seat bones and then you're turning your upper body from side to side. Always keeping your shoulders level and that nice equal weight through your seat bones. So concentrating on the quality of the movement at the top, the stability of the movement at the bottom and try to make sure you can go the same distance to each side. It's always good to make sure you're nice and mobile through your spine before you get on your horse. Okay, then we're going to go down onto your side. I'm going to start off in your capital L position, so that's with your knees bent at 90 degrees, straight line from shoulders, hips to knees. We're going to do your side bend. So you need to have your pelvic floor onto floor three, and then you're going to synchronize lifting your top arm over your head as you lift your pelvis off the floor, then take both back down together. So pelvic floor lift, and then both back down together. I apologize if my top hand is disappearing off your screen. This time of year I don't have anywhere good to film outside, so I'm confined to the house. So you're looking for that nice controlled synchronisation, lifting your pelvis and moving the arm at the same time. If you want to stay doing that level, absolutely fine. Otherwise, you've got to make it a wee bit harder. Now you're going to lift your top leg and keep that top leg lifted as again you synchronise the lift of the pelvis with the movement of the arm. As your pelvis comes back down, what do you don't plop? We want a nice controlled movement up and controlled movement down. Think of what it's like doing sitting trot. The last thing your horse wants is you to land with a plop in the saddle. Keep it controlled. If you want to take it up another notch, you can add in straightening your top leg at the same time. So now we are synchronizing, hopefully, arm, leg, and the lifting of your pelvis. So everything all happening at once, still with control. Try to keep your pelvic floor onto floor three and make sure that your breathing is nice and steady and regular. Okay, we can do one more this one. Okay, then we're going to go on to your back and we're going to start off doing your scissors exercise. We're going to make this quite challenging. So, nice neutral pelvis position. If you have a spiky ball or similar, pop it on your tummy to help you know where your neutral position is. Otherwise, imagine you have a spiky ball or a tray of drinks balanced on here so you're flat across your tummy. Pelvic floor is onto floor three, feet and knees approximately hip width apart. Then for your first level of the scissors, you're bringing one leg up to tabletop and back down, and then bring the other leg up and back down. So you're alternating left and right, coming up to tabletop, so hip and knee 90 degrees. If you want to make that a wee bit harder, you can come to the tabletop position, but still check neutral tummy position and pelvic floor. And you're going to dip each foot down in turn, still keeping that 90 degree position at your hips and knees. Now we're going to add in your arms. So whichever position you're in, hands up to the pointing to the ceiling. And as you take one foot down, you take the opposite arm over your head and back up. And the same thing with the opposite pairing. 
If you are doing this from the feet on the floor position, try and synchronize like so. So you've still got opposite arm and leg moving, they're just moving in the same direction. So your movement pattern will be slightly different depending on whether you start in tabletop or on the floor. And try to watch, particularly if you're in the tabletop version, that the hand that isn't moving stays completely still. You can see mine is struggling, they want to move with my leg. But also you want to be really focusing on those imaginary ropes running from ribs to pelvis. Make sure that they're not stretching, allowing your ribs to ping up towards the ceiling as you go. We do one more with each leg. Lovely, okay, arms down, feet down, one at a time. Okay, have a little bit of a breather. We're going to move on to doing your hip twist. Okay, so similar sort of principle. We'll start off just doing the legs. And again, neutral tummy position, pelvic floor onto floor three. And from the level one version, you're going to roll one knee out to the side and back up. And then take the other knee out to the side and back up. Always keeping nice level headlights throughout the movement, watching that you're not rolling from side to side. If that is a little bit easy and you want to make it a wee bit harder, one at a time, legs up to tabletop. Again, use your hands for a little bit of feedback, neutral tummy and pelvic floor. But this time you're taking the whole leg out to the side and back up. Same principle though, this bit doesn't want to move if at all possible. Okay, we're going to add in the arms. This time your arms and legs are basically doing the same thing whether your feet are on the floor or in tabletop. So once again, arms are up, and this time as you take one leg out, the opposite arm goes out, back up, and the same thing the other way. Now hopefully you've got a little bit more room than I have, because I'm unfortunately just knocking into my curtain and my wall. Same principles as before. Try to make sure that the arm that isn't on the move doesn't move and it stays absolutely still through the whole of your movement. Watch that your imaginary springs running from your ribs to your pelvis also don't stretch, they don't allow your ribs to creep upwards towards the ceiling. We're going to do one more with each pair and keep your pelvic floor Gently on floor three, arms down, feet down, one at a time. Okay, you haven't quite finished with that one yet because we're going to move on to combining your scissors and your hip twist, which is a really good one. We will start it from your level one position. So once again, neutral tummy, pelvic floor onto floor three. We're taking one leg out as one leg comes up. And then you're going to repeat the same thing the other way. So one is doing hip twist, one is doing scissors. Always keeping that nice level pelvis pelvic floor onto floor three. Okay, if you want to do this from the tabletop, same thing. It's a little bit harder to do. So one leg is coming out into hip twist as the other one comes down to scissors, back up. So it should look like this. Again, use your hands if you want to, to give you that little bit of feedback or if you've got a ball, give it a go. This might be a step too far if you've got a ball though. It's quite a challenge. Keep the pelvic floor, keep the breathing. And don't forget to use those imaginary ropes or springs from ribs to pelvis to help keep you nice and strong and still in the middle. We do one more each way. Good job. Okay, if they're up, bring them down one at a time. And we're going to go onto your other side to have a go at doing your side bend. So as you were before, capital L position, knees bent to 90 degrees, straight line from shoulders, hips to knees. Top arm onto your top side, pelvic floor onto floor three, and we're going to synchronise lifting your top arm as you lift your pelvis and both slowly back down together. So it's pelvic floor lift and slowly back down together. As you did before, watch that you don't plop down with your pelvis, keep it steady, keep it controlled all the way up and all the way down. If you want to stay doing that, please do, otherwise lift your top leg to make it a wee bit harder but still work on that synchronisation all the way up and all the way down and nicely controlled. Don't forget to breathe and keep your pelvic floor to ball three as well. Lots of things going on here. Okay, then we're going to add in moving your leg as well. As always, you should stick to the level that you feel most comfortable with doing. And if you start to get tired, by all means drop back down level. Okay, so now we're thinking of trying to keep that synchronisation of arm, leg and pelvis. 
everything doing something slightly different but you still want it nicely controlled. It's no good if you're riding to have good control through your arms but legs that are doing something of their own accord or vice versa. Everything needs to be controlled and working together but separately. Okay, we do one more. Good job. Okay, last exercise is on your front and you can do this in one of two positions. You can do this um, flat on the floor or you can do this um, propped up like I am. I'm going to say propped up because it's a little bit easier for me to talk to you. Okay, so you want to have your pelvic floor onto floor three. We're going to do your one leg kick, so bend one knee to 90 degrees and you're going to pulse one, two, three times, then straight and bend the other knee and pulse one, two, three times and straighten. So keep alternating, one, two, three three, straighten, one, two, three, straighten. And think of it as a pulse. It's called the one leg kick, but you want to be kicking. If you kick too hard, what will happen is as you kick, you'll find that your body moves and you lift your weight off your headlights. And what you're trying to do is keep equal weight through those headlights on the front of your pelvis the whole time that you're doing this movement. So this is all about hip control, but keeping your pelvis still at the same time. We're gonna make it a little bit harder now. And I want you to try and either go heel, toe, heel with your foot or toe, heel, toe. So try and alternate so that you go heel, toe, heel or toe, heel, toe with both legs and then swap and do the pattern with the other leg or with each leg in turn. So you get both legs doing both patterns. Always keeping equal pressure through your headlights as best as you can. Remembering that this is all about hip control, although we're working your feet as well. So this is a real brain challenger, this one. Okay, we do one more set with each leg. Okay, good job. And we're going to finish there, because those are a nice few, quite simple but mentally quite challenging exercise when it comes to controlling your body so you're doing lots of different things with lots of different parts hopefully you found it useful hopefully you found some of it quite a challenge and something to work on over the next week or so um, thank you so much for joining if you haven't already please do subscribe absolutely makes my day um, and take care and i will see you next time bye bye